Hi, I'm Gil. Hi, and I'm Cherry. And welcome to our fourth episode of the IDW Pool List. It's a video podcast of sorts that features some of the latest titles from IDW Publishing. This week we'll be featuring G.I. Joe Cobra number five, James Patterson, The Murder of King Tut, Assy Wood, and T.P. Louise, as well as Transformers number eight. We'll also have a special opportunity for Pool List viewers, so stay tuned. This week, the highly anticipated G.I. Joe Cobra number five finally arrives in stores. But this one isn't another miniseries. It's the start of a full-blown ongoing. This story, though, moves the focus away from Chuckles and instead homes in on one of Cobra's deadliest agents, Sorpentor. In this issue, we're introduced to his cult, The Coil, which tries to sell itself as a legitimate self-improvement organization. General Hawk senses something far more sinister, though, and sends a Joe to figure out who Sorpentor really is. Written by series regulars Mike Costa and Christos Gage, the art duties are passed to newcomer Sergio Carrera, who does a great job of maintaining the dark and mature atmosphere that has made G.I. Joe Cobra a critical hit. On top of that, top-tier artist Ben Templesmith shows his love for G.I. Joe by providing special variant covers for each issue of the story arc. Be sure to collect them all. Next up, join with creators Ashley Wood and T.P. Louise in saying F it. Sometimes you have to say F it in the name of art. Ashley Wood and T.P. Louise make a magazine about everything. Art, comics, stories, and other assorted, but no less interesting bits. Name it, it's in here. This 12 by 12 inch art magazine from the Spectrum Award winning creator also features a short, Zombie vs. Robot tale from Ash and Ryle too. So if you're into Ash's work, gratuitous shots of as well as this book is right up your alley. Our next title, The Murder of King Tut, adapts James Patterson's New York Times best-selling novel in this exciting new series. As we visit the Egyptian landscapes back in the time of the boy king, we also follow the trials and tribulations of his discoverer, Howard Carter. As he searches tomb after tomb looking for what most other archaeologists are certain doesn't exist, the tomb of Tutankhamun and the clues to his controversial and mysterious death. With art duty split between Ron Randall and Christopher Mitten, the style differences both resonate with their respective themes and act as a means to easily distinguish between the two time periods. If you're a James Patterson fan, you'll definitely want to grab this first issue as its storyline is pivotal to future issues. As if that's not enough, you can also find special variant covers that were beautifully crafted by multi-Eisner award winner Darwin Cook. This week we've got a special treat for Poolist viewers and fans of G.I. Joe. Later in the week, IDW will be giving away a complete set of classic G.I. Joe collections via Twitter. But if you're watching this podcast, we've got a cheat for you. If you tweet a message at IDW Publishing with the tags G.I. Joe and Poolis in the next 48 hours, you'll not only be entered to win the prize, your entry will count twice, doubling your chances of winning. You will need to be following IDW Publishing on Twitter in order to qualify. Complete rules and details about this contest are at the end of this podcast. Finally this week, Transformers number 8 aims the spotlight on Spike Witwicky, leader of Skywatch and the Transformers' newest ally. In this issue, Spike walks the reader through a day at Skywatch Central, while cluing us in on the struggle he faces in trying to trust these alien machines. Written by Mike Costa and drawn by veteran artist Javier Saltares, the story gives us a human angle on the Transformers' war and how a leader copes with the hardships of his role. Thank you for watching the IDW Pool List. This concludes the fourth episode of our trial season. Keep the feedback coming to poolist at idwpublishing.com and follow us on Twitter, we're IDW Publishing. Thanks for watching and happy reading.